Hello everyone, it's Yintan here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the latest CSM minutes. These are the publicly available results of the meeting between the CSM, a body of elected player representatives, and CCP, where the two of them met in person in Iceland to talk about upcoming features, problems with the game, and generally just trying to bridge the gap between players and developers. As a result, these minutes often give us a far more honest look at both what CCP is currently working on and what they see as the problems facing the game than what we hear about in dev blogs or at player gatherings. And as someone who served on the CSM for three years and has experience in the behind the scenes process that goes into getting these things written, redacted and then out to the public, I feel like I can provide a bit of a unique perspective on this. So, whilst I prepare myself for the ordeal of having to read out all 10,000 plus words of it, I figured that now would be a good time to break out what I think are the most important pieces of new information that CCP has let slip through the cracks of the NDA in a more concise form. Now, let's start with something that I think will excite most of you, and that's the fact that CCP will be introducing new ships and new weapons. Not just sometime in the future either, but probably over the course of the next three months, as this is put as one of the features of their current quadrant of EVE Online development. And whilst we don't know exactly what these ships or weapons will be, or if they'll be assigned to a brand new faction, there have been a few hints thrown around. The first of these comes from the Quadrant trailer, where we see something that looks sort of like an Upwell branded ship, using a weapon that looks mightily reminiscent of the Keepstar Doomsday with its big bolts of electricity. I've heard some other people suggest that this might be a Concorde ship instead, but either way, this is a pretty clear hint at something that we're either going to get to fly or get to fight in the near future. Perhaps even both, as we do have the third chapter of the Invasion storyline coming up and that might include more chances to side with the Triglavians and fight against Concord and maybe even other players, who knows. But this isn't the only possibility of what could be coming though, as when we look deeper into the minutes, we find another thing that seems to be firmly on the table for CCP's design team and that would meet the definition of a new ship and weapon type, and that's the potential introduction of heavy bombers. Now this is a concept that's been talked about a lot in the community, and it's effectively the idea of providing upsized bombers that are designed to give smaller groups more effective DPS tools to take on capitals. And as you can see here, this is now being given the official thumbs up by CCP, with it being described as the last component of ongoing capital and subcapital balance adjustments. This probably means that they're intended to serve as the bridge between subcapital and capital warfare, and ensuring that capitals need to have some level of subcap grid control, although that is just speculation on my part. Shiny new toys coming to Tranquility is always something to celebrate, so hey, I'm gonna look forward to seeing what this is and what opportunities it ends up bringing us in the PvP scene. The next big takeaway for me is equally pretty encouraging, if a little less exciting for us established players, and that's CCP continuing to focus on the NPE and new player retention as a whole. That's a focus that seems to be shared by the CSM as well, with the term new player being the most widely used term in the entirety of the minutes, coming up 36 times, more than double the amount of times that PvP, capitals, or even the economy are mentioned. The throughput of new players coming into the game has, according to CCB Orca, doubled year on year as well, so this is probably a smart move if they want to invest into the future of the game. This focus is shown in two separate sessions, the first of which revolves around talking about the issues facing both recruiters and new players, trying to figure out how to make matches easier to come by in the recruiting process. Right now I think that one of the big problems in the game is the quote unquote gravitational pull that large organisations have by sheer virtue of providing an environment where someone is doing pretty much anything you can think of and therefore can help someone who's new to the game learn it. Making it easier for small groups to draw in the people that meet their niche interests is something that I think is a necessity if we want to see more organisational diversity in the metagame. And whilst we don't see any promises of development on that topic directly, the fact that CCP is sniffing around it and asking the CSM for their thought really does imply that this is at least on the table. 
Following on from that was the pretty standard NPE session that almost every CSM has in my experience, with the only thing really standing out for me is the insane statistic that unhelped new players only complete the tutorial agents 30% of the time, when compared to 98% when someone else is aiding them. If you've got a lot of experience in helping new players through those agents, now is probably a good time to write up where new players get stuck and bring that to CCB's attention, as they note that they're currently looking into it. But aside from all that, the real reason why I say this is a clear focus not just for the CSM, but also CCP, comes down to something that was said a bit earlier on by CCB Manbjorn, who's EVE Online's executive producer, replacing CCP Seagull in the role meaning that he's the person who directs and allocates resources within the EVE Online development team. As we can see, he feels that the biggest opportunity for growing EVE Online's player base, as defined by the monthly active users, is in targeting those playing for their first 30 days and trying to convince them to stick around for the first year. So expect to see a lot more development in this direction over the coming six months or so, whilst this is a priority for CCP at a high level. Following on from this rather positive news, we have something that I'm much less pleased about, and that's the news, or rather the lack thereof, regarding the Alliance Tournament. It's first mentioned in the CCP Leadership AMA by Sword Dragon, to which Hilmar responds that he's aware that there's a vacuum, and that it's quote, on the list of opportunities. Not exactly encouraging for those of us who are hoping that it would, as promised, return in 2020. Later on, we get to a dedicated tournament section, covering both the Invasion Tournament series that was held over 2019, and the Alliance Tournament, although it was cancelled during that year. Here though, we get pretty much nothing, barring some talk from the CSM on what made the Alliance Tournament a good part of the EVE experience, and a few of the things that they did dislike. I have some problems with the things highlighted here, and the opinions held by the CSM, but I'll be saving that for its own very salty article in the future. What I want to draw everyone's attention to though is the final line in this page, which asks if players would plan tournaments if they had access to the tools to run them. This, to me, points at CCB potentially looking to offload the burden of planning and producing tournament content to the community, which I think misses the point of people wanting an official tournament in the first place. Besides that though, the outlook here is teeth-clenchingly grim, with CCP's complete lack of plans for moving forward making it look almost certain that the AT won't return this year in any form. Another area which really caught my eye in the minutes was the discussion on CCP's new bi-weekly release cadence, which has been associated with some really cool changes, including the introduction of filaments, a ton of balancing being done, and the limited time PvE events. And what this session really highlights is that, first of all, this isn't just the output of Team Talos, with other teams doing the design for PvE events, or chipping in on updates to core mechanics to keep things moving along in a positive direction every two weeks. And this is something that I've been hugely appreciative of, as CCP has far, far too often let perfect not only be the enemy of good, but the enemy of better in any way. In the past, this has made it feel as if CCP was simply ignoring or unaware of the problems that players face, and this new release cadence has been an important step in undoing that perception. Still, from CCP's side, it feels like there's less of an understanding of how important that is from a player-facing perspective, as CCP Goodfella and CCP Rise highlight that they don't think that there needs to be progress on every single patch, as long as there's still content available for the core audience. And if you've ever read the feedback threads on the official forums for patches, you might understand a little better as to where that impression comes from. So, in short, if you want to keep seeing Talos and other teams work to change core features regularly, show your support for CCP doing so. On Twitter, Reddit, the forums, wherever, just make sure that CCP knows that this kind of thing matters to you, and implicitly keeps you staying subscribed and making them money because if they don't know that, I know from experience that it's very, very difficult for the people in charge to justify spending time and effort on something that doesn't gain them new subscribers, and unfortunately balance and iteration generally doesn't. One more small thing that could be very interesting, especially to wormholers or people who live in deep nullsec, was laid out in the EVE portal section, which covers the official EVE Online app. 
And here we learn about a plan by the developers of said app to allow people to buy or sell Plex, no matter where their character is actually located. Meaning that you could be chilling in your wormhole and be able to use your phone to buy yourself a mega time with ISK in perimeter. On its own, this is just a nice little quality of life thing, meaning that you don't have to hop onto jitter alts as much. But more important is what this could potentially imply about the future, as this means that the app will need to be able to remotely view and access markets outside of where the player is located. This could mean that we're potentially heading towards the removal of region view barriers in the market, and maybe in the future, full market access from our phones. This is something it feels like people haven't picked up on yet, but this really does imply a lot of potential change in the future if it comes about, and would be incredibly disruptive to things like a Marjita arbitrage, which is one of the first trades that many newer traders get involved in. By allowing Amar prices to naturally follow jitter prices, rather than by revolving around local supply and demand, which can be supplemented by enterprising individuals. And that's just one example of what this could disrupt. Really there's no limit to what could change as we start to be able to access even more and more on a mobile platform, as it means that things like time zones and uh, reaction times and the amount of people that you have online in one immediate instance become less important. And then the final big thing that I wanted to pull up here just to wrap everything up is that it still seems like CCP and the CSM have no idea what to do with LOSEC. In the session dedicated to LOSEC and faction warfare, there's a lot of conversation and passing on of small changes suggested from the community, but there's no presentation of an overall vision of how CCP wants to transform the space into somewhere that's attractive for a unique type of group in the way that NullSec and Wormholes are. In fact, we even get a question from CCP Ritati, the person in charge of the ecosystem changes that CCP is currently undergoing, as to what drives players to live in low sec to begin with. And this, I think, is what really underwrites the problems that low sec has had with revitalizing the area, as they just don't have any institutional knowledge of what was lost in low sec over the past five or so years. As such, the discussion mostly circles around the mechanics of faction warfare and how those can be made to better meet the intended outcome of making small-scale PvP happen, which is what FW has become. Whilst I've certainly never been someone who focuses my game time on low sec, I think that this highlights a great opportunity for those who do to try and explain to CCP exactly what role they envisage LOSIC filling within the wider ecosystem of EVE and what mechanics would help it do that going into the difference in the mentality between the empire builders of Nolsec and the less static, more opportunistic and mobile pirate groups, and thus the different types of benefits that appeal to them, probably being the most important part of it. In fact, if anyone does go out of their way to write something like that up, please send me a link as I'd love to read it. Alright, that wraps up my quick thoughts on these minutes. And I have to say that as a conclusion, this does feel a little more tight-lipped than usual. Whilst we do get some idea of what's to come with the continuation of the invasion storyline and more NPE work, there's relatively little in details on how CCP plans to address the issues that they themselves bring up in these meetings. Still, I hope you found this useful regardless, and have a little bit of a better idea as to what CCP is working on. If you think I missed something in the minutes that's important to you, please leave it down in the comments below. A special thanks, as always, goes out to our Crassuses, brewed from Northern Coalition, Zolkalando, and Jessica, as well as to our other $5 and above patrons in January Valentine, Big Badaboom, Zar, Dunk Dinkle, Miss Moses, Kem, the Ashfell Celestial Academy, Closer Canty, Crazy Daisy, Ulrich Bluthers, and Omnicious Shardan. If you want to join them in supporting the channel yourself, you can either check out the Patreon link in the description below, or if you'd like, just share the video with some other people who you think might enjoy it. Until next time, have a good day and fly smart.